everybody. How are you? So welcome back to another English session with me. And today we are going to do an English speaking and listening practice session with a short story. So you know that I give you reading lessons. This time I am going to do a kind of listening and speaking practice activity through which you can practice your English listening and your speaking skills. So this time we are not testing the listening. What we are going to do is we are going to practice speaking skills which is very important. So two basic skills that covered for you. Now listen carefully what you have to do. This lesson is going to be divided in two parts. The part one will be your listening practice where I am going to read the story so that you can understand what am I reading. You will be presented with the text. So all the text, the transcript of the story will be given on the right side of the screen. Do not worry about it. So if you want to read, you can read along. As I'm reading the story out loud, what you can do is you can listen to it and also read it silently if you're more comfortable. If you just want to practice your English listening skills, then do not read, just listen to what I'm saying. Focus completely on me. It's your choice. Now, part two. Part two will be series of question and answers which are given for you to practice your English speaking. You will be able to practice your English speaking with those question answer series. So I'm going to tell you in detail about that when we reach part two. Between these two parts, I'll also cover some vocabulary, some difficult vocabulary which we will encounter. I'll be covering that. I'll be explaining vocabulary as it will come in the text and some vocabulary after reading the text. So wait for it. Listen to the words that I'll be explaining because they might be helpful for you in order to do your speaking practice. They will be useful for you. So this lesson is going to be a complete package for you. Your listening, vocab, and then your speaking practice. Three of the very important English areas we are going to cover today. So are you ready for this? I'm Shivangi Gupta, your CELTA certified English language tutor. And let's begin with this particular lesson today. The English lesson with a short story. Let's begin with the part one. So this is the book that I'm picking today. Bewitched. The language which is used in this book is appropriate for any intermediate English learner. So if you are at an intermediate level, this is really good. You will feel comfortable yet you will also face some challenges because when we are learning English, we need challenges in order to learn new vocab. So this will also make you comfortable, but it is going to also provide you some challenging words through which you can improve your English improve your vocabulary. This is not a very popular book or you might not know about this book but this is something that I hold dear to me because I remember this uh, that I bought this book when I was in grade 9th or 10th. So I bought this from book fair and this is pretty awesome. It has short stories related to witches and wizards, bewitched stories of witches and wizards. So through this cover, it seems that the stories are going to be so dark and loomy. But I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Now you have to decide, is the story really dark? Is the story scary? Or is there going to be a twist in the story? Let me tell you, you're going to love it. I'm going to read my favorite stories of all from this particular book. And you will love the story, believe me. This is something very interesting. Okay, let's begin. So the name of the story is The Dreaded Black Witch written by Samita Erni. Are you ready? Listen carefully now. Evil hovers above the dreaded black forest. Evil spreads her black arms wide cloaking the forest, changing the green of fresh leaves and the brown of rough bark into immutable black. Evil awakens the slumbering spirits of the trees and fills them with the murderous purpose. And when some lost traveler is unfortunate enough to stumble on the dreaded black forest, 
and lay his weary head on the black ground seeking sleep, the trees cluster closer together and plunge and plunge their branches into his slumbering body, ripping out his heart. His blood soaks the ground, dripping onto the roots of these evil trees, sating their murderous thirst. So the legends whisper. Now I'm going to take a break here because I need to tell you some quick vocabulary so that you can understand it. So slumbering body, slumbering means sleeping. When someone is in deep sleep, that is slumbering. So another word that I want to review here is plunge their branches. So the trees, they are described as evil and they plunge. That is to suddenly push with a force, with a sudden force and they rips the heart out, rips the heart out of the sleeping person. Oh my God. Let's see if the story is going to continue like this or it's going to change. So the legends whisper. Now, so the legends whisper. It's like, it's an expression. It means the legends, the stories, they whisper. Like people have rumors. They tell each other, these are the stories that have been told uh, since ages and they are told through generations. So basically, the author wants to say this is not true. Nobody knows if this is true or not. The legend says it. For example, the legend of Ashwatthama. There is a legend that people say that Ashwatthama still roams around the world. But we don't know it. It's the legend. So similarly here, it's the legend. Let's see if this is true or not in this story. In the middle of the dreaded black forest rises the dreaded black tower. A twisted and warped edifice. Soaring high into the cloud. The clouds of stinking black smoke blows from the numerous chimneys that adorn this tower. In the tower lives the most dreaded, awful, blackest, wickedest witch that ever lived. The dreaded black witch Alka. On a gloomy morning, Alka was absorbed in her work, that of being the most evil witch alive. She was working on a particularly evil potion, a potion that would transform naughty children into demons. She threw a dozen nude tails into the cauldron, two bleeding hearts, five burnt toenails. One ingredient was left, the most potent ingredient. The dark fears of nightmares condensed and purified into a black gas that which has trapped in a corked crystal bottle. So corked crystal bottle, you must have seen in magic shows and all that. The clear crystal bottle with a cork on top. So the corked crystal bottle. But then somebody thumped on the door to the tower and a voice cried. Dreaded black witch, dreaded black witch, open up your door. Alka caught off guard, dropped her crystal bottle, the bottle broke, and precious gas of nightmares fled towards the sky, escaping out of the black chimneys. Drought, cried Alka, double drought, that was expensive stuff. I had to sell two petrified unicorns to get that. And the demon king Taraka wants the whole potion by next week. She opened the door to see who had so rudely interrupted her work. It was a princess. She looked up in surprise at Alka. I am Princess Anahita. Are you, are you the dreaded black witch? Yes, I am. Beloved Alka. You're not exactly what I expected. The princess had a point. If someone was called the dreaded black witch, you would expect this person to be a shriveled, ancient hag, warts jostling for space on her desiccated face, toenails and fingernails curling into sharp taloons with matted hair, emitting a foul stench. Alka was neither old nor shriveled. So shriveled means 
someone who's covered with so many wrinkles, who's quite old and wrinkled skin. She had a wart or two, a crooked nose and thick eyebrows. She wasn't a beauty by any reckoning, but still she fell a bit short of the impression conjured up by the words, the dreaded black witch. In fact, she looked rather ordinary. Alka was quite sensitive on this subject. You don't look like a princess either. Anahita looked woeful. Woeful means sad. Princesses are by definition beautiful, with soft skin, the color of buttermilk, curling blonde tresses means hair, and a slender figure. This princess was tall, gawky, with pimpled and spotty skin and greasy, strawberry-colored locks. Locks again means hair. It was only her fine robe and diadem that announced her status. Alas, the princess sighed. That is my misfortune and that is why I am here. No princes, kings or brave knights flock to my father's court seeking to woo me. I am not beautiful enough for them. What am I to do? How am I to find my prince? So that is why I am here. Imprison me, dreaded black witch. Torture me. Be wicked. Come on. Why would I do that? You must be mad. It's what witches do, isn't it? They imprison and torture princesses. It shows the world how evil you are. Hearing of my sad plight, some shy walrus gallant will come to rescue me from your diabolical clutches. And when he rescues me, he will fall in love with me and all will be well. Alka was astounded. Astounded. Surprised. Look here. I'm really busy being evil and I have no time for the likes of you. Stay here till someone rescues you, my foot. Firstly, no one can rescue anyone from my diabolical clutches. And secondly, you'll just be in the way. What self-respecting witch would put up with a princess? Bah, now go away and stop troubling me or I'll curse you. Curse me? What a splendid idea. Could you? Alka shut the door in the princess's face. But an hour later, Anahita was still there, diligently thumping on the door to the dreaded black tower. Why can't you take no for an answer? Alka bellowed. Go away, I'm not changing my mind. The princess pulled out a pile of picture books from underneath her billowing gown. See, she exclaimed opening a book. I have proof. Lots of witches do evil things to princesses. It's what defines being a witch. Look here, this is the story of Rapunzel, who had beautiful long golden hair. She was imprisoned in a high tower by a witch, who used to enter and exit the tower by climbing on her hair. A prince came by, climbed up her golden hair, fell in love with her and released her from the clutches of the evil witch. So you see, witches do imprison princesses. In fact, she added with a malicious glint in her eyes, malicious glint, that she had a point. You wouldn't be a proper witch if you didn't imprison me. The accusation stung. Be cute. Alka opened the door a crack and inspected the book, scratching at her warts. The princess had more or less summarized the story correctly. But you don't have hair like princess, Alka noted triumphantly. Your hair is lack and straggly. It's not beautiful, lush and long like Rapunzel's. You'd never grow enough hair to let down even from a ground floor window. Not to mention that your hair would never be strong enough to take the weight of one able prince. We couldn't do this. Anahida was miffed. She pulled out another storybook. 
This is the story of Sleeping Beauty, who was cursed to remain asleep until a prince kissed her and awoke her. You could put a curse on me like that. Alka seized the book and turned the pages. But it says that the rest of the court fell asleep as well. The king and queen and so on. Yes, so what? Well, that takes a lot of magic. It's quite a lot of work to put a whole court to sleep. And who would run the country if the king and queen and all their advisors were fast asleep? Why? Criminals would go unpunished, taxes wouldn't be collected, and neighboring kings could come in easily and conquer the country. Would you want that? The princess frowned. Frowned. So frowned is an expression when you're confused, when you're thinking. Frowned. Well, I suppose it wouldn't work if I just fell asleep. I guess there wouldn't be that much glory in it. She paused. I guess I'll just have to go back to the palace. It will seem a bit strange after I've already left a note at the palace signed by the dreaded black witch claiming to have kidnapped me. What? You couldn't have. Yes, I did. Dreaded black witch, for I had assumed you would imprison me and do something awful to me, once presented with the opportunity, as befits your status. But you have turned out to be quite different from your reputation. The princess, having made her speech, gathered up her storybooks in her gown. With a haughty turn, she set off for the palace. Alka was in a dilemma. Dilemma means confusion. What could she do? Sending the princess back after the whole country thought she had been kidnapped would mean a loss of prestige. It was the question of her honor. So it seems that witches have also a reputation to hold to, isn't it? Okay, so I would like to summarize a bit of the story here. Take a stop. So this princess is knocking on the door of this witch and she is applying anything, any argument, so that the witch traps her. The witch makes her a prison in the tower. But this witch is not ready to actually imprison the princess. Now let's see what is going to happen. This witch is now in a confusion because she has to live up to the reputation of being a witch, a good witch. That is being evil. Okay, let's find out what's going to happen in the story. Stop, princess, stop. Come back. When the princess turned around, Alka continued grudgingly. I guess you could stay here at the tower for a while until somebody comes to rescue you. But, she added, when Anahita looked gleeful, gleeful, that is happy, you will have to help out. Do course, earn your keep. Oh, sure, dreaded black witch, anything. A week later, Alka was cursing the impulse that made her accuses to the princess's demand. The witch had sent the princess out with gallons of black paint to stain the trees and leaves black. Anahita was astonished. What? You mean you don't turn the forest black through your vile and nefarious magic? You actually paint the forest black? Well, it saves magic. Magic is precious, you know. Alka responded, disconcerted. The princess shrugged, went off to paint the forest. She came back wearing a pensive look. I've been doing some thinking. She told the witch, I think you're not actually evil. Look here, you. Alka spluttered, but the princess cut her off. I wondered, it's not like you're particularly good either, but you try really hard. I've seen you in the morning smearing fall creams and herbs on your warts, uttering charms to make them grow. I've watched you rub chicken feathers and dirt into your mated hair so that you can look more like a traditional witch. I've painted your forest black. These things don't seem to come naturally to you. You put in a lot of effort and hard work to seem evil. Alka didn't know what to say. The days passed. Every day, the princess washed the forest. 
the bated breath from the highest window in the tower. At last, one day, she caught a gleam of armor moving amongst the black foliage. He's here, he's here, she cried. Alka heaved a sigh of relief. Finally, Anahita would leave. When the armored figure near the tower, Alka decked herself in, the, in her blackest robe, smeared foul-smelling unguents on her face and hair and put on her pointiest, most crooked wit's hat. Hot, chivalrous night, she inoted in her most evil voice. You have trespassed the domain of the dreaded black witch. Your life is four feet. Dreaded black witch, most wicked practitioner of the black arts, the knight responded in a booming voice. I am Prince Karan, heir to the blessed and prosperous lands of Kethi. I've come here to see foul and polluted forests to fight and defeat you, to release the most comely and beautiful princess, Anahita, from your wild tyranny. What a lot of words, thought Alka. And I suppose you imagine that if you succeeded in this impossible task, you would marry the princess? Well, the knight shifted uncomfortably. I would rescue her and take her back to her parents. If she then wished to become my wife, I would be delighted. Anahita nodded at the witch. Good enough, she whispered. Alka cackled. Well, the knight, prepare yourself. Cackled is like the loud laugh, evil loud laugh. Well, the knight, prepare yourself. She pretended to utter an incantation. It was a harmless spell supposed to make fingernails grow longer. Alka had no wish to harm whoever came to take Anahita away, but she had to put some sort of semblance to a fight. Before she could complete the incantation, the prince fell down in a dead faint. What did you do to him? Anahita screamed. Nothing, nothing, I swear, he just fainted. They dragged the knight indoors and removed his helmet. My, he's so handsome, Anahita squealed. The prince was beautiful. Waves of glossy black hair framed a tanned, angelic face. Long, lustrous eyelashes fringed glowing cheeks. Alka waved smelling salts before his nose. The prince opened his eyes and gazed with astonishment at Alka and Anahita. What happened? Alka thought fast. Prince... Mm, you overpowered me with your strength and bravery before falling unconscious because of the injuries I inflicted on you. Uh, but I'm so impressed by your valor that I consent to let Anahita go free, marry you and become your wife. Anahita beamed at the prince. What? The prince exclaimed. Marry her? She's, she's a princess, all right. But she looks more like a wet dish rag than a princess. You must be kidding. But you have to marry me. You rescued me, Anahita shrieked. No way, I am out of here. You've got pimpered skin, crooked teeth, greasy hair. You're not the kind of princess I'm looking for. Alka pursed her lips and directed her blackest, meanest scowl at the prince. Threats were in order. Well, Prince, if you see things that way, I'm afraid. I'm going to have to curse you. You'll be covered in enormous stinking wards. Your hair will fall off. She stopped. The prince had fainted again. The princess looked at her. What do we do now? You still want a prince? Yes, Anahita was Flustered. I know he's not particularly brave or anything, but he's a prince and I don't exactly have options. Well, I could brew a magic potion that will make him fall in love with the first thing he sees. I'll spread it on his eyelids and when he wakes up, if you are the first thing he sees, he'll fall in love with you. Oh, thank you. Anahita hugged the witch unexpectedly. 
Thank you. I know you're not an evil witch if you can do that kind of magic. Alka looked away sheepish, but she brewed the potion and sprinkled it on the prince's eyelids. Anahita sat on the floor next to prince, waiting for him to wake up. But the hours drifted by and the day darkened into night. The prince still hadn't woken up and Anahita huddled up in a corner, pinched herself hard to stay awake. The night wore on and her eyelids dropped lower and lower. Finally, in the darkest hour of the night, Anahita fell asleep. The minutes ticked by. Suddenly, there was a loud thumping on the door of the tower. Anahita got up, startled out of dreams of handsome princesses. The door burst open in a shower of wooden splinters that flew across the room. How dramatic! A demon shape filled the doorway. Muscles bulged and horns gleamed in the silver moonlight. A folk tail swished back and forth, swished back and forth. In agitation, two burning red eyes banished the darkness of the night. Fee fight to fum, I smell the blood of two frightened humans. The awful voice bellowed like a thousand cymbals clashing. Where is the dreaded black witch? She owes me a potion that is two weeks overdue. Upstairs, Alka leapt out of her bed and crammed herself into her black tartar dressing gown. I'm coming down, she shrieked. Don't eat any of the humans here, Demon King Taraka, until I get there. The Demon King glowered menacingly at Anahita. But just then, a wine issued from the corner. The prince had awoken and he crept out from underneath the rubble of the broken door. Demon King Taraka, what a beautiful name, what beautiful short teeth and what beautiful red eyes you have. The first thing Prince had seen was the Demon King with his flaming eyes and he had fallen in love. But this is dreadful, the Demon King whispered to Alka next day. This prince is simply awful. Not only does he follow me about with his great big puppy dog eyes, but he serenades me and writes sonnets. When I bare my teeth and say I'm going to eat him to get him off my back, he says the most dreadful things. Alka winced. She remembered watching the Demon King on the verge of strangling Prince Karan. So strangling is when you just want to just you're just so much frustrated with someone you want to strangle them karan had squealed in delight and said oh you big demon eat me i love you eat me i'll be the sweetest thing you ever ate i can't bear it any longer the demon king said our deal is off i'll go to the wicked witch of the west for my potion and the demon king raised his enormous self on tiptoe and scurried out of the tower and into the forest, as quiet as a dormouse. Alka scowled. This was bad, a good piece of business gone, she thought. But the next couple of hours were even worse. Prince Karan, when he discovered that the Demon King had left, collapsed on the floor, upsetting Alka's black cauldron. Alas, why has he left me? Why has he left me destitute? He has taken my poor heart with him. The prince cried. He beat his chest, crumpled his princely garment, tore at his lustrous black hair and rolled over the dusty floor. Kill me, he pleaded with Alka, or do something to rid my heart of this terrible pain. So this prince was actually throwing a tantrum. Alka was speechless. She looked at Princess Anahita, who was sitting in a corner, large tears dipping down her cheeks. He might as well go, Anahita said, stifling her sobs. There's no point anymore. Alka pointed in the direction that the demon King Taraka had taken and the prince leapt up and eagerly bounded out the door. Well, that's it, I guess, Anahita mumbled. Alka, despite all her dreaded black witchness, felt sorry for the princess. There will be other princes who will come to rescue you, she offered. 
consolingly. It will work out somehow. But Anahita shook her head, picked up a can of black paint and headed out to finish painting the trees of the dreaded black forest. Days passed. Anahita was gloomy and silent. She seemed to have turned her back on her former dreams of marrying some prince or hero. So turn her back. Turn her back is an idiom is that you no longer expect something. You turn your back on something that is you ignore something. So she was just ignoring her former dreams like she has given up on the dreams. Alka wondered what fate had in store for the princess. Although having the princess around was a help in some ways. And even though she pitied the girl, Alka like all true witches craved her solitude. Solitude. One bright morning, when dazzling bright sunlight filtered past the black leaves and trees and light in the grey gloom of threaded black forest, Alka spied the gleam of armour and the flash of jewellery amid the trees. Who was coming? Was it another prince? I hope it's not a prince, Anahita said. I am sick to death of princes. But as the procession neared, both Alka and Anahita saw that it wasn't a prince or a knight errant or a brave hero who had come to the dreaded black tower. It was Anahita's parents, the king and the queen. The princess gasped. <sighs> what are you doing here? The king looked up mournfully at his daughter. We have come to negotiate with the dreaded black witch for your release. Why? Anahita was astounded. She couldn't think of why her parents wanted her back. They had always sighed, looking at her, not knowing what to do with such an unprincess-like princess. The queen continued, Your brother, the crown prince, has decided that he wants to be a hairdresser and doesn't really want to be a king. He thinks he's better at styling hair than ruling a kingdom. Your sisters have all been married off. They are the queens and princesses of other countries now. And you are the only one left. The only one we can groom and teach to be the ruler. If you are so inclined. If you don't want to do it, or if the dreaded black witch refuses to free you, we don't know what to do. The kingdom cannot be without a ruler, Anahita's father declared. Breaded black witch, what can we give you to free our daughter so that she can come home and learn to rule her kingdom? Alka glanced at princess. Her eyes shone brightly and her lips quivered. What do you want? The witch asked her. Anahita bit her lip. It's better than chasing after princes and witches. This will be something real, meaningful, but difficult, the witch warned. You'll have to work hard. So that was how Princess Anahita returned home to become Queen Anahita, the ruler of the kingdom of Nagara. The dreaded black witch Alka did not accept any ransom for releasing the princess. Instead, she said, she repainted the whole dreaded black forest that was all I really needed her for in the first place. The king and queen, Anahita's parents, were astounded. Is she really evil? They asked their daughter later. Anahita smiled. She is the dreaded black witch, not dreaded evil black witch or the dreaded good black witch. She is neither. But she is a very wise witch and I want her to advise me on how to rule my kingdom. When Queen Anahita later visited dreaded black witch to consult her on setting up a school to teach girls magic, the dreaded black witch showed her a postcard that she had received. The message read, Having a great time, hoping you are doing well. Thanks so much for everything. Love Prince Karan and Demon King Taraka. The picture on the postcard showed the Demon King and the Prince at the beach, wearing hula skirts and straw hats, 
while a red sun sank into a beautiful blue sea behind them. The postmark was from Hawaii. And so everyone lived happily ever after. So here we come to the end of today's reading and listening session. So I hope you enjoyed the story. Now you know why I purchased this particular book, why this book was recommended for uh, the students of grade 9, 10, 11, 12th at the time when I purchased this book because even though the name is Bewitched, this book is filled of stories where it teaches you life lessons. A good collection of stories and the story was aimed at intermediate level. So if you're a student, if you're a learner, English learner who is at intermediate level, this story was perfect. I know there were lots of difficult words. Do not worry. So there were a lot of difficult words, but we are going to cover them. Some of the words I have already covered. You can see when we were reading the story, we covered some of the words. I explained some uh, concepts to you. Now, the rest of the words that I think are major difficult words, I'm going to cover them now. Are you ready? Let's review some vocabulary before moving on to our session two or the section two of this particular lesson that is speaking practice. So let's review the vocabulary. If you want to make notes, you can make notes. Still, the text is going to be there on the screen. Do not worry so that you can easily find the words. I'm also going to take my pen out like this and let's begin. Okay, so I'm also going to read out that particular line so that you understand the context because understanding context is very important. I always tell you that when you're learning vocabulary, context is must. Now the first one, okay. Evil hovers above the dreaded black forest. Evil hovers above. So hovers above. So this particular, this is not word, this is phrasal verb. This particular phrasal verb hovers above is used here. So hovers above is like floating above something. It's like suspended in the air and floating above something. Now evil hovers above the dreaded black forest. Like you must have seen in the movies and your shows, TV shows and all that, which are fantasy TV shows and movies or maybe some horror movie and all that, that black clouds, they come above a house when they want to show something evil. So it's like you can say evil is hovering above, like the clouds, they hover above the house or the locality or the location that they're shooting at. So they show the black clouds are coming in on top in the sky. So that is like hovering above. Now I am sure that you must be able to relate to it. So hovers above is like they are moving like in a circular way or maybe they're moving straight. They're floating above in the sky. So you see this actually enhances your imagination. When you read with context, you are able to understand in a better way. So evil hovers above. So for example, if I have to use this word in another sentence, hovers above how I am going to use that. So example sentence can be, I think it's going to rain. The clouds are hovering above in the sky. Another example sentence can be, oh my God, this fly keeps hovering above my head. So sometimes flies, mosquitoes, they come and hum near your ear and they hover above your head. So that is also called hovering above. Now moving on to the next word. Okay, so this one is, I want to cover this one. We have heard this a lot, I think. Now you must have learned this and you might even use it, dreaded. The word dreaded is used a lot. Dreaded black forest, dreaded black tower, dreaded black witch. This word is coming time and time again in the whole story. So dreaded, what is dreaded? So as the story is about the witch and it is related to evil, like the evil word is coming in the sentence, dreaded means that something is very frightening, like you're, something that is evoking too much fear. So when you see a horror movie, it's like it's dreaded. We don't know what's going to happen next. And suddenly we are so scared of the scene that is coming on the screen. So 
that's like dreaded you are scared about something something is evoking too much fear or something is frightening or worrying it creates some kind of nervousness inside you if i want to use it in a sentence example sentence could be like every student is scared of the dreaded exam i know there is often this one particular subject or maybe one particular paper through your whole studies or maybe the whole year this one particular thing or topic that is like too difficult i know everyone suffers from that one topic one concept that feels like oh my god this topic if it comes in exam how are we going to do that we pray that okay everything went okay with that particular topic so that is like dreaded topic you're too scared of that particular topic or it's too difficult to solve so dreaded can be used in certain ways you're really scared of it or maybe it can be frightening so both are used okay next word so next word i'll use is cluster together so i'm going to read out the sentence the trees cluster closer together and plunge their branches into his slumbering body so the tree they cluster closer that means the branches are coming together and they're making a bundle like a group so that is cluster for example cluster of pencil cluster of wood so cluster is like a bundle my friend always keeps a cluster of pencils look at the man he's carrying a cluster of woods also you can use the word cluster for a group of people so basically like i told you when there we have something in too much quantity that is countable the thing is that whatever we are talking about the group that's countable so if there are people in a group we can count them countable so we can use it for a group of people a group of things maybe group of plants trees that's the cluster now moving on to the next word okay listen carefully on a gloomy morning alka was absorbed in her work on a gloomy morning so this is a dark forest what do you think gloomy morning so gloomy is like depressing dark there is not enough light there is no happiness no enthusiasm gloomy means it's like someone is depressed sad it is used in a negative sense only that's gloomy so the sentence example sentence could be she felt gloomy because she lost her favorite teddy bear okay moving on to the next word so now listen carefully because this one single sentence has so many words okay listen hearing of my sad plight sad plight some chivalrous gallant will come to rescue me from your diabolical clutches Okay, so many heavy words. Oh my God! Do not worry, we are going to review everything. So, hearing of my sad plight, sad plight. Now, this princess is asking which to capture her, make her which captive, a captive. So, her sad plight is that particular situation. So, is it a good situation or a bad situation? If you think about it, the context is if someone is. being held as a captive obviously the situation is bad so sad plight the adjective sad in itself tells us that this is something negative so plight is like a bad situation that you are in a bad situation or you are suffering badly so hearing of my sad plight some chivalrous gallant so here chivalrous gallant this is some kind of language that you will find in shakespeare you will find it written in the novels of jane austen it's it was used in medieval english like renaissance period and these words they are related to knight so they were like a status of a man basically these particular words are always related to man and how they behave with women so like they are honorable they respect women they are like morally they have a good moral status they are of high moral values 
like a gentleman that you want to say. So, chivalrous, that's an adjective. It's the quality of being too honorable and respectful and like uh, a gentleman and gallant is then brave and heroic so chivalrous gallant is someone who's honorable brave heroic in short she wants to say a prince so this is basically these words are used as prince to say that a chivalrous gallant means prince or a man who has all these qualities the last one will come to rescue me. Rescue is to save somebody. Rescue me from your diabolical clutches. Now, what is diabolical? So, diabolical, this is kind of an adjective. And diabolical means something that is not socially accepted or something that is considered as like supernatural, basically devilish or demonic. So, diabolical clutches because she is a witch. So it's like her evil clutches and clutches clutch means to capture somebody to help someone captive right so diabolical clutches so her evil capture it's the whole thing refers to her making the princess a captive so i hope that this vocabulary is now clear now the next word it's basically a phrase it was a question of her honor. So basically, question of her honor. This particular, we can say it as an expression. We can consider this as an expression or we can say that this is a phrase. Question of her honor. That means something that will question her reputation as a witch. I'm going to read the line so that you can understand the context. Sending the princess back after the whole country thought she had been kidnapped would mean a loss of prestige it was a question of her honor so basically the witch has to live up to the honor of being evil and that people are scared of her what if she lost her reputation nobody's gonna respect her as a witch because that was her job in this particular uh, story so you should be good at your job to have that honor people will think that she's not good at being an evil witch this is like you know, this is actually a bit uh, ironical and this is written here to create humor. That is to make the story a bit comic. Now the next one. Stop princess, come back. When the princess turned around, Alka continued grudgingly. So grudgingly here means that this witch was not actually ready to keep the princess in her tower, right? She was reluctant. Grudgingly means half-heartedly, not happily. She was not enthusiastic about it. It's like okay, she doesn't have any option. So it's like she was almost unwilling to do the thing. So grudgingly is that someone is not willing to do something, but still the person has to do the thing. Okay, the next one. Okay, she pretended to utter an incantation it was a harmless spell so incantation through the sentence itself i think the meaning is almost clear it's a it was a harmless spell harmless spell so basically incantation is like a ritual while doing magic it is the magic spell that is uttered the words that are used to utter a magic spell or a charm for example, like if you've seen in Harry Potter, this one famous scene, I think everybody knows about it, that Wingardium Leviosa, where they lift things up with the magic. So that is an incantation. The words Wingardium Leviosa, those are the words of incantation in order to do a spell. Okay, next one. Moving on to the next word. Alka, like all true witches, craved her solitude solitude now this is one of the most beautiful words that are there in english language it is considered one of the beautiful words that are there solitude absolutely beautiful this word means that the status of being alone all alone but solitude doesn't have negative sense it means peaceful when somebody finds peace while being alone that is solitude when you spend time with yourself that is called solitude 
For example, she went on a solo vacation because she wanted to have some solitude. Okay, again one more word. That is the last word for today. The king and queen, Anahita's parents were astounded. Astounded. So astounded is like being surprised. Like too much surprised. Almost shocked. You are shocked with surprise. That's astounded. I was astounded to know that Tina has moved to a different country. Okay, so here we come to the end of vocabulary session. Now we are going to move forward to the part two of this particular lesson. I'm sure that you people are reading about it. So the thing is that if there are words which are left for you that you think were difficult, what you can do is you can search the meaning out and you can add them up in your vocab diary. So search the meaning, write them down. Whatever words you encountered that I did not cover here, so you can go and search the words out. It can be a task for you in order to enhance your vocabulary. Now, without any delay, let's move on to the section two of today's lesson, the English speaking practice. Let's come to the part two of this particular session. That is your speaking practice. So we all know that speaking practice is very important. And for that, we'll use today's story to do our practice. In order to do that, I'm going to ask you 10 questions. I'll ask you 10 questions and you have to answer the questions out loud. Speak out loud. If you want to take time, you can pause the video and then you can speak the answer. If you don't know about the answer well, what you can do is either you can listen to the story once again or you can wait for the right answer to come, speak whatever is coming to your mind, speak that. And when the right answer comes to the screen, speak out loud. That is, read aloud the answer. You have to do that read aloud thing that I always discuss with you. You have to speak the answer out loud while reading. That's what you can do. So are you excited? Let's begin. The first question is, who lived in the dreaded black forest? Who lived in the dreaded black forest? You have five seconds to think about the answer. So if you want to answer, pause the video, speak the answer. Now, here is the answer. Speak out loud the answer. Moving on to the next question, question number two. What was the witch doing when princess knocked at the door? What was the witch doing when princess knocked at the door? So, the answer is on your screens. Speak out the answer, read out loud. Now, the question number three. So, the question number three is, how did the witch look? You have to describe the appearance of the witch. So, how did the witch look? So, the answer is on your screens. Remember to read out loud. The question number four. So the question number four is, what did Princess Anahita want from the witch? What did Princess Anahita want from the witch? We have five seconds to think about the answer. The answer is on your screen. Okay, now the question number five. I hope you're speaking it out loud. You're speaking all the answers out loud. So the question number five is, what was 
Anahita's problem. What was Anahita's problem? So the answer is on your screens. Okay, so the question number six. We have five more questions remaining. So your speaking practice is still going on. So the question number six is, how did princess convince the witch to make her a captive how did princess convince the witch to make her a captive so this is a tricky question think about it you have lots and lots of opportunity to answer it there can be various answers even a long answer so think about it if you want time pause the video take your time speak everything that you want to and then come back to read out loud the answer that i have for you So the answer is on your screen. Okay, now the question number seven. So the question number seven is, who came to rescue the princess? Who came to rescue the princess? And the answer is on your screens. So the question number eight now. And the question number eight is very interesting. Listen carefully. What happened to the prince who came to rescue the princess? What happened to the prince who came to rescue Anahita? The princess Anahita. And the answer is on your screens. Okay, second last question for the day. Question number nine. What happened with the princess at last? What happened with the princess at last? And the answer is on your screens. Now, question number 10, the last question for this particular session and my personal favorite. Was the witch really evil? What do you think about it? And why do you think so? So add as many details as possible while speaking. While you're speaking the answer, try to add as many details as possible. So was the witch really evil? And the answer is on your screens. Okay, finally, we have come to the end of the speaking practice session. But, 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 but these were just the end of the questions i have one more task for you do not go and then i have a homework for you which is very important so do not go right now listen to it and then at the end also complete the homework it's going to help you develop your fluency so now the last task that is additional speaking task for you you have to do it yourself i'll give you some ideas once i tell you what is the task so the task is what was the value lesson what was the lesson that you learned from this particular story so why did you like the story and what was the lesson that you learned from this particular story now i love this story a lot uh, i really liked it you know why because 
I'm going to give you some pointers. You can elaborate. Number one, it is a twist in the fairy tale. So basically, this story is about witch and witches and wizards. Basically, this was supposed to be evil. Yet, it turned out to be a fairy tale. It was not traditional fairy tale. I could relate it to modern times and it has a life lesson at the end. So you can elaborate all the points. What do you like about it? What do you not? So this story covers a lot of topics like the problems that are faced by youngsters these days. They are concerned about their appearance, their personal life, their professional life and all these things has been discussed through this traditional story, especially girls. So I think this has a very powerful message for all the girls in this world because you are known through your skills, your skills, who you are, your work that speaks for you. So I think that is the main idea of this particular uh, story and freedom should be given to girls to choose what they want in life. I think this is a really inspiring story. What inspired you in this story? Talk about it. Talk about all the points that ha I have just told you. Elaborate them and speak for at least three minutes, two to three minutes about this particular topic, about the story. That is the speaking task for you that you have to do. You have to do it on your own. Now, another thing, homework that is given to you. So you can consider this particular task as your homework. This is your homework. You have to speak and you have to do it twice. You have to speak for once. Once you have spoken, take a pause, take a rest for two minutes, three minutes. Think about what you have spoken and do it once again. So when you will speak it again, you will see some kind of improvement when you are speaking. So that is your task. You have to speak about the topic two times. First time and then the second time. It is going to improve your speaking skills and fluency. This was the lesson for today and I hope that you liked it. It covered a lot of things for you. We did reading, listening practice, speaking practice and we reviewed vocabulary. So we covered a lot of things all together. Plus when you listen to me when I was Reading the story, you get to hear the words, the way they are pronounced. You got to hear the sentence, the sentence structures. So listening practice is very important. We did that. We did the speaking practice. I also gave you a task for the homework. Do that task. You always find ways to practice your English. So I've already given you one task. So one task has been done while we were doing the lesson in the video. Another task I have given to you as your homework that I think you will do and you should do. It will improve your fluency a lot. So this was it. That's it for today. I hope that you're going to come back tomorrow for another awesome lesson. Don't forget to subscribe the channel because you get one English lesson every day sharp at 8 a.m. Do comment and let me know what you think about today's lesson. And if you have any suggestions, if you want me to take any topic, let me know and I'll make a video for you. Like the video and share it. Now I'm going to see you tomorrow. Till then, take care and bye.